Welcome back to my channel for another Nikon episode. And this episode is a bit special because I'm comparing two zoom lenses for the Nikon C9, but also of course working very well with the Nikon C7 Mark II and other Nikon C cameras. And the lenses I want to compare are the following. The first one is the 24 to 120 millimeter F4 constant aperture. It's an S lens, so it's in the high quality segment of Nikon lenses. And the second one is the standard zoom namely the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 also constant aperture again in the s lens and this one also has the fancy oled display here and uh, what i want to do is i want to provide my own experience want to show sample images on both lenses shot on the nikon c9 and the c7 mark ii and want to make a quick discussion what lens could be the one for you is it the slightly larger one 24 millimeter is the starting focal length on both lenses but this one goes only up to 70 millimeter but has a wider open aperture and this one here has a larger focal length up to 120 millimeter but has a compromise on the aperture namely an f4 let's kick off the video In the last weeks and months, I have shot both lenses intensely on the Nikon C9 and uh, I can say both lenses are excellent and what typically is expected from me if I do a lens comparison is I put them on the same camera, I shoot the same scene and then we compare these lenses. This is absolutely pointless for the 24 to 70 and the 24 to 120 because you will not see a significant difference in image quality. These lenses are both so excellent that you can safely choose in line with your preferences. Do you prefer one full stop wider open and uh, you go for an f2.8 lens but your focal length stops at 70 millimeter or do you prefer a 120 millimeter focal length in the wider zoom setting but have a one stop more closed aperture of f4. That is basically what your distinction criteria will be between these two lenses and here of course as I said in the intro you have the OLED display you don't have that here but they are both S lenses so in terms of build quality full weather resistant and made in a very valuable way so that's basically all you need to compare but let's nevertheless go through the specs of these two lenses I've prepared that so we'll discuss it we'll put every single specification side by side and then I want to show sample images for the 24 to 120 millimeter as well as for the 24 to 70 millimeter we'll look into some of these images and then we conclude and hopefully you have then a bit more insight which of these two lenses is for you if you don't want to have both of them of course like I have them here in front of me on the table. Here are the two lenses side by side. On the left hand side we have the 24 to 120 on the right hand side we have the standard zoom 24 to 70 millimeter. And uh, what I already mentioned is of course you get a much longer focal length on the left hand side which is a five times zoom on a 24 to 120 millimeter and the standard zoom is only a 2.9 times zoom. So if you care about that, if you want to get closer to subjects by zooming instead of walking, then the left hand side is clearly an advantage for you. On the aperture span, they both can close down the aperture to f22, but on the longer focal length lens, it starts widest open at f4 and on the standard zoom we have an f2.8. Both, as I mentioned before, are constant apertures, so they are not changing when you zoom. Angle of view is 84 degrees attached to the 24 millimeter, and then it gets very narrow on the 120 millimeter lens to about 20 degrees, and on 70 millimeter, of course, it's a little less narrow, and we have 34 degrees. Maximum magnification is significantly larger on the longer focal length lens, so 0.39 times, Whereas on the standard zoom you have 0.22 times. So if you're after macros, after close-up shots, the longer focal length lens is superior for you. And uh, nevertheless, on the standard zoom, you can also do close-ups just with a lower magnification. Minimum focusing distance, almost the same, 35 centimeter on the 24 to 120 and 38 centimeter on the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Moving on to the next page of specifications, if we talk about blades and that influences of course how in the blurry background lights are appearing, these lenses are exactly the same. So we have nine blades on both lenses. In terms of coating, we have Arneo on both lenses, Nano Crystal on both lenses, Fluorine on both lenses and the only difference is that on the standard zoom the 24 to 70 there is a label called super integrated and you can look this up 
on a website from Nikon what this all means in detail. I'll post a link down below in the info box so you can walk through that by yourself. ED glass elements, we actually have one more on a 24 to 120 millimeter lens, namely three and two on the standard zoom. Aspherical elements, almost the same, three on the 24 to 120 millimeter, four on the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Aspherical extra low dispersion glass elements, that's a luxury you only have in the 24 to 120 millimeter and not in the standard zoom. And internal focusing gets a big yes on both lenses and that basically means that if you focus, the lens tube is not coming out and is not moving forth and back during the focusing process. It's interesting to see on the weight side that the longer focal length has actually less weight than the standard zoom. So we compare here 630 gram with 805 gram. And you also see it if you look at the two lenses that the standard zoom is actually a bit more voluminous. Lens elements 16 on the 120 millimeter focal length lens and 17 on the standard zoom. So it's almost the same. They are both very complex lenses and they both have an excellent performance as I will demonstrate later by sample images. Filter thread is a bit smaller on the 24 to 120, which is in line with the lower weight. And on the standard zoom, we have 82 millimeters. So here filters will be more expensive. And then we have no OLED display on the longer focal length lens, but we have one on the standard zoom. And as I mentioned before, I don't think that moves the needle, but for some people it might be an important additional help and guidance if you have that display with different parameters and shooting information and an indication for depth of field. I don't really think you need it, so I'm not missing it when I shoot the 24 to 120 millimeter, but it is something which is worthwhile to be mentioned. Both lenses are weather sealed and in this way can shoot under rough conditions wherever you take the lens with you on the camera body. And that's basically it. And if we move through these specifications, we see that there is not a big difference. These lenses are pretty much at par. And the only big difference really is, do you care about that one additional full stop having a wider aperture of f2.8 constant over the full focal length range? Or can you live with an f4? And here my standard argument would be that you can compensate for a more stop down aperture of f4 compared to an f2.8 by one full stop on the ISO value typically. And uh, the ISO capabilities of the Nikon C9 are so excellent that it really doesn't matter and will not move the needle if you have to go by one full more stop into a higher sensitivity on the ISO value. I think it's best now to show sample images. I will do it for both lenses. I will show them in a slideshow. I will also later comment on a few of them and give you more impression what you can expect from that lens. And then I think it's time to conclude the video. Fashion and beauty shootings with the 24 to 70 millimeter, no problem at all. And you saw in the slideshow, a lot of nice images. They are all pinpoint sharp. They all look very good. And this lens is absolutely performing and gives you the additional flex you need if you are in a fashion shooting. Here is a shot at nighttime. So this is a 15 second exposure at f8.0, ISO 100 at 30.5 millimeter, just perfect. Very clear, very clean, very crisp and absolutely nothing to complain about. Here, landscape, no problem at all. Macro photography, as I said before, 0.22 times magnification. Works really good. Portraits, absolutely fantastic. This is at 70 millimeter, looks really good. And uh, on landscape in general, this is at 38 millimeter. And here you also see, I think with the 70 millimeter, the focus on the grass in the foreground, the background nicely blurry. 
this is all working very very well and sharpness is not a topic at all for this lens here a nice image from the sunset on a spanish island beautiful how this lens is rendering color towards the sensor same situation same daytime here in the evening you see here nicely how the sun is represented in the middle of the frame quite nice and in general a very very well performing lens so absolutely nothing to complain. Let's now look into sample images from the 24 to 120, and I will also quickly comment on a few of them. The 24 to 120 millimeter delivers in the same way as 24 to 70 millimeter. Look here at that portrait. Nice background blurriness here. Very sharp, absolutely crisp. Super how this lens is rendering what's in front of the scene here. Look here, very nice. And in general, this lens is delivering from all angles and uh, I don't have any issue with that lens here on that building here. Super sharp, super crisp. And uh, also if you go to 64 millimeter here, like very sharp, very nice here, 24 millimeter in an industrial site in Zurich looks really good. Let's crop in for a moment. Let's have a look here. Look at the details. Look at the level of incredible information you get in this image. Very nice. Nothing to complain here. An interesting image, of course, with that flag here. And I think a very good image composition. And uh, here the drone, if you look at the USB port, for instance, super sharp, super crisp. This lens is delivering from all angles. Also at nighttime, this is an image where I was observing a scene where a group of people were trying to do some light painting with drones here. And uh, I think this also is a very nice image at an ISO of 400 and a 10 second exposure. So nothing to complain. I think this lens is totally at par with the 24 to 70 millimeter. That's why I said at the beginning, it's pointless to shoot the same scene with the two lenses and trying to figure out the differences because these lenses are just terrific in their performance and you will not see that differences in a significant way. I truly considered whether I want to include in this video a demonstration of the autofocus performance of these two lenses on the Nikon C9 with its excellent autofocus system, which I showed several times on my channel already. But again, it's as pointless as if I would shoot the same scene with these two lenses and then try to find differences in the images because the autofocus performance with both lenses is absolutely spot on. Nothing to complain, it's super quick and it works like a charm on the Nikon C9 as well as on the Nikon C7 Mark II, although the autofocus system on the C9 of course is the better one if we compare the big Nikon C camera with the smaller C7 Mark II. I hope this video was helpful for you to make your own decision which of the two zoom lenses is for you. Do you prefer 24 to 70 widest open f 2.8 constant up to 70 millimeter or do you want to go longer also starting at 24 but want to have the flex to go to 120 and then on the compromise side have a one more stop closed aperture in the widest aperture setting of f4. Both are S lenses, both are excellent. I don't think the display really moves the needle here. And uh, I would be interested to hear your opinion, which one is for you, which one did you choose and which one do you like more? Please drop me a comment and let me know. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.